Hello and welcome to Sonata Zamba. My name is Mariam Pana and today with me in the studio I have Mr. Kofi Dawson and Mr. Ibrahim Mahama. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Alright, so today we're going to be talking about arts in general. Okay, so I would want to know Mr. Kofi, um, how was it like for you growing up in Ghana? Uh, <coughs> my parents came from Keta okay. and you where my father was working in Takuradi, that's where I was born in 1940, mm -hmm. during the Second World War. And, and there was at a place called Type C, which was uh, where the, like a uh, housing, mm -hmm. housing for uh, railway workers. Okay. My father was a draftsman at the railways. And uh, where we were staying, uh, there was a big drain there, and children we go to play in the drain, yeah. and we do charcoal drawings to the, the drain <coughs> paved the cement. So yeah. I used to start drawing as a child then, and <coughs> I remember one time we had a photograph, you know, that impression. I was sitting in a chair and. The, Cameraman came and took picture of me like you are. I'm posting before you now. You are taking pictures. Of okay. Me. <laughs> so, not long after that, yes. <clears throat> we came to Keta okay. because my father had gone mm. to uh, England to study. Mm. I remember my mother was selling in the Kodokroba market okay, on a big name tree, and we used to. And then we were not many. We were, I and my sister Ellen used to carry some of the oil from the house to the place when the things finished. So I remember those things, uh, experiencing yeah. talk radio. At that time, too, cinema was starting. Okay. It was a silent film, and it was during the war. So they have rushes to show at the place, and the cinema hall were made of uh, uh, palm. Fronts which yeah. are moving together, so we we'll go there and peep <laughs> at what was happening. Yeah. You know, the dispatch riders riding their motorbikes and mm -hmm. walking, but it was silent yeah. movie at that time. Yeah. So my impression of art and uh, artificial way of presentation of yeah. things began on my impressionable age. Okay. Radio. All right. Okay. I'm during the Second World War to during that war. Uh, where we were playing, then I went to open a, a toilet to go down. There was an, a white man there, a soldier who has run away from me. And by that time, the soldiers were coming from Europe yes. to talk right okay. before they joined the mm. warships. Mm -hmm. okay. So I went into my, uh, my hey, there is a white man there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that was. Uh, then uh, after, well, I, ha, we had to go to Keta. Mm. And then uh, I think it was a, also a memorable time, that journey, yeah. when we were relocating to from Western region to the uh, region. Okay. Right. So it seems like um, from childhood you'd always had it in you to you know, do art. But I want to know when did you decide to take it more seriously? Uh, <clears throat> well, child, I didn't know what was what uh, the whole world was. Mm -hmm. The whole world was just magic to yeah. me. I remember when we were at Keta. Uh, the, Keta is a sandy place. Yeah. In our compound house, I found a piece of stone, yeah. which when you look at it, it's kind of colors, rainbow colors, and yeah, it's been cut like gemstone. So when you look at this, it's, it's, uh, Flashing light, mm. that thing impressed me a lot. Mm. I think that must have given me an idea of uh, color, you know, impressed color, the 
magic of color in my mind. Mm. And also, um, when I begin to go to Keta State School, yeah. class one day, I was about age five, and uh, <clears throat> there were the senior boys that the, the clay at Keta is from the lagoon, mm. and it's black, like this black thing we have okay. here. So I remember the seniors made a big car, made a big car out of the clay. The clay yeah. And then I was looking at their legs, <laughs> through their legs to see the car they were moving. They were yeah. and that was another thing. Okay. And then in class one, we had a teacher who was teaching us in the arts. I think the first thing I made was a fish, you know, and it was, the teacher was praising the fish and he, he, he had some sand pit where he yeah. displays the things, she displayed the things that we were making. Yeah. And she commented that oh, I've done some fine things. Thing, yeah. I remember those things, yeah. yeah. So that's my childhood experience of uh, Keta. Keta too, we have this uh, big sea and the lagoon. We used to make reed mat like boats. Yeah. And we cruise on the, uh, it's not, La, it's not like lagoon, so it's called Kute, which is a, a pond between the sea, sea. and the land. Mm, okay. It's different from the one which is the lagoon. Mm, okay. mm. So um, I, I want to know, um, how would you describe um, or compare art then and then for, you know, now in contemporary times, the art we have? Um, well, I've talk to you about uh, art when I was very young, young yes. uh, impressionable years. But when I was in middle school, mm -hmm. our art was more like what we are going to say now, because I was at Banner Hill. Okay. There we were about 14, 15 years old. So we have very serious art uh, programs there. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, just like Mr. Kofi, and other people were already trained in art in teaching college. Yeah. So they were taking the art very seriously and they were organizing it well. Yeah. So I remember there too, uh, our headmaster, Apu, yeah. was my father's friend. And uh, he used to organize art for the middle school. Yeah. And uh, it was a program that weekends we go to the classroom and make drawings. For example, they used to say self-government now. So mm -hmm. we used to do art to support uh, the programs that yeah. the school needed. And then that's where art was taken seriously. Yeah. And then there was a museum there too. The Pana Middle School was set up by Germans. Mm -hmm. And in the middle of the uh, classes, the four classrooms, yeah. there's a small place where they call it a museum, and all the interesting artifacts that come from the forest yeah. are kept there. The strange formation of trees and all, many things were kept as a museum, mm -hmm. like a botanical museum. Okay. <laughs> that school was a boarding school for boys. We used to do a lot of hard work there, and then there was also those mostly for the crowbows, mm -hmm. and those were good at carving. Okay. Like Osom and Ko, they spend their time they carving uh, rabbits, most rabbits, which they sell to augment their uh, funds yeah. for, for school. And so, um, art was very good for us in the middle school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So comparing so, it to Contemporary times. And like there now. was there was one Mr. Anato, yes, the, who was a trained artist, mm -hmm. and then he drew he painted a mural okay. on the main building there. So I was always looking at it. Mm -hmm. So um, if we are comparing art then, like to so those times that you were growing up and all of that, and comparing it to right now, the art, what is the difference now? Uh, <clears throat> you no, know, at that time the country was very young okay. there was there was no independence when the grow course mm -hmm. so the art world was they were very strong, strong. with the teachers okay. because after that they have 
art education, the training colleges. Wow. So they even have magazines mm -hmm. where they feature uh, artists and their works and well photographed in the colonial sense, you know, mm -hmm. the Europeans who were colonial, who were our uh, what uh, colonial masses, the colonial masses yeah. love art. So they really try to inculcate it in us. And the, 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 the place where we, they held art exhibition was at the beach yeah. in Accra, where the common uh, beach council was at first located, where the art center is. There was a hall at the very tip there. So in the, the whole exhibition, then I used to go and look at it with my brother, okay. my late brother. And also, one of the artwork we like to look very much was the uh, the unknown soldier, what do you call it? That bronze uh, soldier of the gun. Yes. Yes. At the first, it was situated in front of the high court. Mm -hmm. And every weekend, we go and admire how beautiful <laughs> the craftsman was. Later on, it was moved to Blaster Square uh -huh. and raised very high, so you don't look at it closely. Yes. <laughs> at that time, to the artist we knew was the late Kofi Antuban. Mm -hmm. It was all over, very famous. Yeah. The other ones were Savage and uh, Bartimeus, Amonkote. Mm -hmm. And they were very inspiring artists. The art scene, which we see now, the modern scene, mm -hmm. we have absolutely no idea, except the one who could look was Kofi Ampofo, okay. who, used, who stays at the mountains and mm -hmm. used to make uh, cement fondue uh, sculptures with highly uh, <coughs> distorted figures and yeah. faces. Okay. And also was Kofi, uh, what's his name? Vincent Kofi. Okay. So those were the circle of artists we knew. Yeah. But then there was only a society of Ghanaian artists which the president was Kofi Antuban. Mm -hmm. By then we were all in the secondary schools and we had no idea what was happening. Mm -hmm. Even we were so naive that even we were afraid to apprise our works, you know, about uh, one CD or so. We weren't <laughs> sure whether <laughs> the works was worth anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, I want to know um, these modern times and this you know contemporary times what are some of the things that um are different like i just want to know what is different at least i know that um those in those times people didn't know so much about art you just saw what you saw but you didn't really know um what that meant or you know what that really did but i want to know now how do we see that <clears throat> uh, before we arrive at now yes something happened okay the governor, Gorgisberg, mm -hmm. decided to improve design yeah. and uh, traditional art in Ghana to raise it to the high level. So he built uh, an art school at mm -hmm. Achimota, where Antubam, Amonkote, uh, Douglas Dawson were taking our students mm -hmm. to start the modern art movement. Okay. For some, Amon Kote told me that when he went there, he used to draw and paint like uh, European painting, yeah. portraits and things. And they wanted him to do African art, oh, you know, okay. things. And so uh, he couldn't, so he dropped out of the school. school. Because he wanted to be paint like portrait, not yeah. uh, aquabat doors. Mm -hmm. So, uh, gradually, the school moved to Kumasi, yeah. mm -hmm. and then that's the start of our fight to enter the modern, modern world. Modern. And so there was no infrastructure as such for uh, keeping the art because we do it just so that we can do something. Mm -hmm. But how to preserve it and keep it and make it grow? and be national yeah. was not, not uh, considered. Mm -hmm. 
you know, we are struggling to be artists. Then we are not struggling how to keep the art, where do you see it? And yeah. Occasionally, the government will ask us at the university to do something to commemorate an event, right. okay. like African unity. Then we have to make the coats of arms mm -hmm. of all the Africans so they will put it to decorate the town somewhere. Mm -hmm. Gradually, to some of our lectures begin to make sculptures to decorate Kumasi, mm -hmm. like Akato. Yeah. Which one. So it's growing so slowly. Mm -hmm. But at that time too, we didn't paint on canvas. We just paint on blood. We never knew what canvas oh, was like. So when we were starting canvas, we used to go and take a uh, great bath to Alikidon, where they have used to sell cement, uh, flour and use it to paint. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But gradually, things begin to move and our eyes begin to Open. Mm -hmm. But when we are so naive in art, the, it's not possible for the government to take notice of the movement. Like doctors, engineers, they, you know, they command this thing. But the artists, yeah. it's not before we are growing in numbers, mm -hmm. becoming an influence where the government has to sit down and plan to build a big place where the art should be kept. Yeah. At the moment, Ghanaians are happy that, oh, we are able to draw like Europeans. The European tourists come and buy it. Oh, yeah. So that's okay. Mm -hmm. But they buy it and go and decorate mm -hmm. their place. Their places, but yes. where is ours? Mm -hmm. True. Nobody buys European art, but they are always taking hours to go and yeah. make their place nice, yeah. beautiful. Mm -hmm. So we have to begin to know that art is very important for the education of the masses that are coming, yeah. our children. So if you have beautiful halls designed where there are only artworks yeah. there for the people to come and see and enjoy. And because art also, visual arts also entertainment. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. so Mr. Ibrahim, um I know you were not there in those times, but I'm sure you are abreast with you know art in those times too. So I want to know, um, what do you think of you know comparing that time and then this time? Um, the, the he, you know, in the question you said something about modern art, yeah. modern and contemporary. Mm. They are two separate things. Okay. Yeah, in layman's language, when you want to describe something now, you say in our modern times. Yeah. But in art, modern has always described a specific moment. Wow. If you're talking about modern art, okay. it describes that moment where we transition from the art of the academy or mm -hmm. art that came from a certain kind of elitism, okay. even like into the 20th okay. century. So you're talking about, let's say, the early part of the 20th century till the 1960s. 60s, 70s, or 80s, okay. and then after that, you have in the ushering of the contemporary arts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is best. And Mr. Dawson grew up within that period yeah. of the modernist tradition. And within the modernist tradition, it's there, it, it, he was talking about the creation of the art school and all those things. Mm -hmm. But even in the spirit of it, in the way that it was made, a lot of modern art. If you look at these characteristics and also people that made it were mostly white male mm -hmm. yeah so when museums were beginning to spring up for instance when you go to new york there is a museum of modern art yeah. which was one of the first museums that was built uh, dedicated specifically to modern art and if you're looking at how those spaces were created in relation to artworks and how the audience would respond to the artworks and all yeah. that we didn't have that tradition here yeah. even though we were studying art yeah. and i think also one of the things is also uh, problems is because the state has never really dedicated the any resources to the infrastructure okay. with regards to like creation like creation of museums, museums. and also exhibition centers yeah. and a lot of the artists of course within his generation yeah. and subsequently had to probably rely on uh, some of the spaces at the art center yeah. or hotel spaces, lobbies and all that. So for a time, as you're talking about that canvas painting, when that, be, it, it almost became some kind of hegemonic form. So people would, artists would come to make, would come to believe that in order to make the purest form of art, yeah. it had to be on a canvas. Because within the modern, uh, modernist tradition, a lot of artists used to use that as some kind of a trope. But later on, uh, of course, during the 60s, artists began to break away from that. But that's where also our history becomes a bit short in a way that 
we somehow bought into that whole idea of the modernist tradition in a way that has grown with us up until now. But of course, with con the advent of contemporary art, we are, and also with technology and all that, yeah. we can be everywhere at the same time. So now we're beginning to learn about all forms of art, artists that made really interesting work. For instance, Mr. Dawson, because the, what makes Mr. Dawson's work actually quite interesting is because he did a lot of experimentation. Okay. Though he was working at the information service department, even as a public servant, when he came home, he still made art. Yeah. yeah. So you in the exhibition where we are celebrating his work, his life's work, you'd actually see a lot of experiments that he has done, most of which have never actually been seen before. Mm -hmm. So you begin to go into an artist's thoughts process and also just his life as a person and yeah. how he somehow related to the objects and experiments and things around him. Uh, Mr. Dawson, I, he just mentioned that you were in public service. So I would want to know, if you were in public service, why did you still want to pursue arts? Uh, <clears throat> I was in public service because when I was a student at Kwame Nkrumah University mm -hmm. on a Kwame Nkrumah scholarship, yeah. there was a stipulation that graduates should serve bond five years in the civil service oh, okay. to offset the money spent on them as students because mm -hmm. we were on that scholarship. Yeah. Now that scholarship thing is not there. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so that's one of the modern thing that happens okay. today. Yeah. To see the difference between, between yeah. So uh, after serving five years, mm -hmm. I had to leave, see, okay. so that I could be on my own. Mm -hmm. So because I knew I would be on my own, I used to during the lunch break, yeah. I rush home to my studio okay. and do things like paint portraits of uh, the president, mm. uh, Buzia, so that a friend of his took it. And things, just doing things like that. Like that okay. But I think I remember so that the paintings which are sweeting, mm. made to decorate the CP conference room were removed and destroyed uh, and they were kept somewhere in the yard in the information. I used to treasure them, look at them, but I don't know what happened to them later on. We need a place where things should be kept okay. for his historical reasons. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So um, earlier on you mentioned uh, other people in the arts, like in your time. I want to know what are some of the things they did in, in those times and where we can find them. <clears throat> um, well, some of the works yeah. that were done by, uh, which inspires, mm -hmm. was this uh, Vincent Kofi. Okay. He made, he was commissioned to make special fountains for the State House on the Four caught there. Okay. Uh, but then, and then Antu Bantu made the crock with uh, Ginkra symbols for the numbers. They are still there. Sometimes, if something happens and I go there, I try to look mm -hmm. if they are still there because those art works in public. Mm -hmm. If you are not careful, yeah. the Europeans love art so much that they are ready to smuggle them out of. Uh, <laughs> from under our nose yes, yeah. to go and put in their museums mm -hmm. because they love art oh, to yeah. build our public education. So, do, so this thing came from Ghana, uh, uh, State House. Yeah. <laughs> so if you are not careful with their artwork, they will be stolen from under oh, you. Yeah. So they must have a system where you guard and watch and protect put them too. Them. Not just, you just put it there. Yeah, yeah. I've seen Mr. Ashari's birds in flight and other works which we use, Kwame Nkrumah commissioners to use to decorate a crowd, mm. whole sculpture in yeah. concrete, vanish. <laughs> because they say that they are making a street yeah. and they will have to use that place. Yes, they move. Yes, they move you never see it never before see. you are aware, mm. it's somewhere in Europe. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's also because of the lack of education, yeah. also mm -hmm. with regards to the significance of artistic work and also what it means for a generation of people. Yeah, yeah because uh, it's one thing that we really have to take seriously. seriously. And not just in relation to art, but in all fields, like even in the field of medicine or in the field of agriculture, I think that we should reach a point within our 
Yeah, we should reach a point within our history that we should realize that it's very important, at least the memories that and the conditions that we've come from or the conditions that we embody in a way. Mm -hmm. So if we create uh, institutions that we can have historical informations and objects which related to, let's say, specific fields, even in the field of medicine, in the field of, let's say, agriculture, arts, for instance, he was talking about creating institutions that can archive artists, works and their legacies. Uh, for instance, there was um, uh, Kofi and Tobam had a painting, a mural at the Ambassador Hotel, which when the, when it was being converted into the new hotel, Moving Pick, they could have saved that aspect because it was painted on a wall. Well, okay. It is not very difficult to preserve a wall. You can actually just find a way because if you're spending millions to renovate a building, yeah. you can probably spend a tiny budget of it to actually and there are some things, like in Europe, for instance, or in the West, yeah. there are some buildings where, or there are some monuments, which are so important that if you're going to build a road and that monument is there, there. they have to make, it's either you don't do it because you cannot touch it, touch it or yeah. you have to build it around, around it and leave it, or you have enough money to actually uh, take it take successfully it. and transfer it elsewhere. Yeah. I remember there's an important story of... Uh, I was working on this project in Tel Aviv uh, a few years ago, mm -hmm. and there was a building in the, like somewhere in Tel Aviv, which was very, 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 very important. Mm -hmm. And they were they they had to build this new uh, office buildings in that area. And according to before they could even build it, the law was that they couldn't touch it. And if they could, they just because the the design was such a way that the it would occupy a part of where the building was, but. Mm -hmm. They also knew that it was possible to move, move the building. Yeah. And you couldn't just move the building. They needed three years. So they spent three years actually, they needed one day to move it, but they needed three years to actually dig into the soil and then and like collect the whole building and just yeah. move it about 50 meters off where it was in order for the thing to happen. It took three years before the construction started. Mm -hmm. So you see how much dedication goes actually into preserving. So you realize that those people take things yeah. seriously. Mm -hmm. So I think that it's, we have to arrive at that point and also not just think of art as some kind of a mere decoration which can either exist or not, mm -hmm. but actually embodies a certain part of our own history and our lives and generations to come. And we have to treat it yeah, as equally as we treat other things.